In the previous video, I uh, gave a, a reminder or a short explanation of multiple file projects, and now I want to talk about what this particular multiple file project actually does. It does something pretty cool. Um, so you're probably familiar with uh, with Python, and you know one nice thing about Python. We can do a little Python here. So here's a, a little Python thing, and you know that you can declare uh, a list, and then you don't really have to worry about um, how much memory is allocated to this thing. You can just sort of add stuff to it, and um, uh, A plus, and maybe you want to put in a bunch more things, like 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. <clears throat> and this thing, of course, knows how long it is. Sorry, you do it like this. So these are some really nice features, and the arrays that you work with in C are missing all of these features. But you can write code to sort of put them back in, and that's what I, I want to do is create sort of a data structure where you don't have to worry about how much memory is allocated to the damn thing every time you use it. So in C, if you were just using a regular array and you did something like, you know, a 700 and whatever is equal to 99999. And if you weren't careful, um, you would get a segmentation fault because the array would not have enough memory allocated to it to address that location. So let's fix that as well as we can. Control D. Okay. And so what I've done here is I've made something that I tried to make kind of like a. Um, a Python style array. So let me compile this and, and run it. And uh, actually, I think I already have the, the .o files around from the last lecture. And oh, but I compiled it with a stupid 32 bit on. Okay. And so check it. So I declared this is my type, and underscore t is going to be my my naming convention, which I'm going to try to be as consistent as possible about always using, to indicate that something is a type. And the idea I had when I started writing this is I would make a dynamic array that only worked for integer types, and then in a subsequent video I'm going to show you how to do it a little bit differently with a with a so what's called a void star type. Uh, but for now it was kind of lazy. This this thing sort of works in general, but Basically, it just works for integers, and I'll say some more about that in a second. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've written this initialization function that allocates memory, and um, but the append stuff is supposed to work just like in Python. So you can see that here in the output. Um, this uh, length 0 alloc equals 2, that stuff comes from this print statement, and it means that uh, the, the len of t is 0 because it doesn't really have any stuff in it, but the uh, amount of memory allocated to it is enough for two entries. And that's because the way I wrote my initialization function, you pass it in how much memory you'd like to be allocated to it initially. And these append commands work just like Python append, it just puts another thing in the data structure. And then I, you know, I had to write all these functions. None of them were just defined. And so I wrote a function also that prints the thing out, which is what's going on there. All right. Um, so like in the last video, there's this header that gives the declarations of all the functions. I have a destroy function that I didn't use to deallocate memory in over here. But really, I should have, because my program is a small memory leak putting that aside for a second. So what I've done is this is this is basically, you know, struct is what lets you do this. And uh, what I've done is just for the time being, I'm using an int. So type def lets you come up with aliases for types that already exist. And so this thing that I'm calling type t is just an alias for a regular int. And my idea was that I would put this in, and then in my code I would only mention type t. So if I ever decided that I wanted this thing to be uh, an array of strings or an array of floats, all I have to do is change that in this one place. So that's not a bad idea. 
and uh, so this code that I've written is going to be reusable in, in a bunch of other circumstances because you can just change int to be double or float or double complex or whatever data type that you want to use. So let's look at the struct and see how it works. So remember this type def stuff is just saying that I want to call the thing by this name. And uh, so it has, an, an, you should think of this as an array, but it's, a, it's an array that's, that's allocated at runtime using malloc. And uh, you, should, you should remember that int is what time t, type t really is in this case. So this is going to be an array of integers, and that's the actual list part. And now size t is a type that's defined in standard lib, and it's like an unsigned long or something. It's just some big unsigned number. So len is going to be how long it is in the sense of members. So this one has five members, so its length is five. This is going to be how big it is in terms of how much memory is allocated to it. So um, this thing, it it was empty at first, and then it only had enough memory for two entries allocated. But you can see that without yelling at me or complaining, it just automatically allocated more memory. And I'll, sh I'll show you how, how it did that. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, the main thing about a dynamic array is that it has the ability to grow, to kind of reallocate memory for itself. And that's defined in the, uh, the grow function. So let's look at that and see how that works. So here it is, and there, you know, this is a pretty typical function. This is the kind of function that if you write a lot of C code, you could write something a lot like this, like a million times in your life. Uh, so first, I use assert just to do some lazy error checking. So this is a pointer to one of those structs, but if no memory had been allocated to it, then my code here would blow up. And similarly, if no memory had been allocated to the list part, then my code would blow up. So I just assert those two conditions here to kind of get that stuff out of control. I'm sorry, under control. In case my code does fail for one of those reasons, I'll get a, an error message that's meaningful and I can figure out that that was the reason and then try to backtrack and figure out what caused that and so forth. And it also uh, helps the person reading the code to kind of understand what the preconditions are here. So of course what you've got to do is you've got to make a new list and I need to allocate uh, some memory to it and what I do and what everybody does is you just double the amount of memory that's already allocated. So if you remember the the lesson on structs, pointers to structs, you know the arrow notation is how you access the fields. So it's going to allocate twice as much memory to this new thing as was allocated to uh, the list part of this guy. And um, so you have to check and make sure that malloc succeeded. It might be that your computer can't allocate any more memory. What if you make a really unreasonable demand, like, you know, the thing is already allocated six gigabytes and then you try to double that, but you only have an eight gigabyte machine, then it's going to crap out. So in that case, I return failure. I return one on success. And there are other plausible things that you could do here, but that's what I do. Now you need to copy the contents of the list that you already have into the new list. So I use memcopy to do that. Memcopy is a function that's defined in string.h, and all it does is copy bytes. So you have to tell it how many bytes to copy. So how many is that going to be? That's going to be how many bytes a type t takes up, so secretly that's an int here, times the number of them that are in the uh, guy that we're, that we're trying to grow. And you could use alloc here if you wanted to, it's just that we don't really care to copy the, the stuff after len, you know, this thing has three more entries that you can't see, but they just have trash in them. So there's no point in copying those values, so I stop there. And now don't forget to free the old guy to give the memory back that was allocated for the original list, because otherwise your program will have a memory leak. Now this makes the, the new list be this stuff that you just allocated, which is good. And so 
and this records the fact that now you have twice as much memory allocated as before. And so this kind of explains the, the output of the main function a little bit. So I initialized my guy to have enough space for two entries, and that's what's reflected here in this output line. Now I add one, two, three, four, five things. And now somehow it's allocated enough for eight entries. And the reason it was able to do that is, so it did this uh, without calling the grow function. Then it called this and it it had enough space for that. It has enough space for two. But when it got here, it had to grow. So it grew before it put in the two. That made it size four. And this is the fourth place. It's got enough room for that one, no problem. But when it got to this line, it had to grow again. So it grew twice. That's why it went from two to four and then from four to eight. And that's why it makes sense to, to double it too. You won't have to grow as kind of, it has some overhead, you make your program slow. You want to do it kind of as seldomly as possible, but if you just double the amount of memory allocated, that's a good rule that in practice makes it so that your program doesn't have this overhead. To too great an extent. Um, and here's the code for the append function. It uh, First, you don't want to, this is growing, but you don't want to grow unless you have to. So when do you need to grow? You need to grow when um, the next slot is, um, this is the the maximum possible allocated size. So this is, this condition just says that. Now I have a grow command and so that actually does the growing and now I do this stuff that people who write C frequently do which is I, I do several different things on the same line here so the growth happens but then I check to see if the growth succeeded and I assert that it does so if the growth fails because that malloc statement back in grow doesn't work out I'll realize that and my program will crap out right here and I'll, I mean it's not super graceful uh, graceful failure but it's at least I would know why my program died and now you just do the, um, you're supposed to just add this new element, so now you just make the, the list, and this is going to be the next available space, have that value. And um, this postfix increment is something that you should really understand that I haven't made a tutorial on yet. So everything in, everything in C, it has a return value and a side effect. So here I've referenced the length. That's how many things are already in the array, right? Now, because I'm al adding something new, I, I need to make it bigger. So the plus plus has the, the side effect of incrementing this value to reflect the fact that there's now a new thing. But it also has a return value, and what it returns is the old value, which is the first available slot in the array here. And so that's why this works. Now, there are only two functions left, and uh, destroy just frees the memory. And init just, uh, it allocates memory for the little guy himself. And it also allocates enough memory for the list part, and that's based on what you requested the initial size to be. And uh, so yeah, this is, this is super useful when you start writing programs to actually do things you know, you'll probably want to use code that's like this. I'm going to make another another video that does it a slightly different way. And here I've got some... Uh, I'm not going to do that well, you know. I shouldn't have done that at all, because now I look like an idiot at the end of the video. But that's all I had to say.